Hi, welcome to Calypso Tutorials. In this tutorial, we'll see how to update the application in runtime. Operative systems like Android have built in features to automatically update applications. To use that feature, you need to upload your application to the store and the user must enable the automatic updates on the mobile device. If you don't want to upload your application or simply rely on the user to perform the automatic updates, or even if your operative system doesn't support that feature, Calypso has built-in functions who work in any platform. Just like you synchronize data, you can also synchronize the application itself to update it. For that purpose, I'm going to copy-paste one of our synchronized buttons. Let's change its name and text. Let's call it Sync App. Now let's remove the synchronize and use the update project action. Select get project update and update project. Select TCP communication profile and choose to PDA source. This option uses the terminal ID property to fetch the project update from the server, which means it uses the same folder structure as the data synchronization. The big difference is that in this specific case, Calypso transfers only the project update file. Let's deploy the project to the mobile device. Now let's make a small change in our project. Let's create a label to display the project version as defined in the project properties. Call it project version and let's put some text to remind what it is. And when the form opens, we set the value of that to the keyword project version. This keyword holds the value that we input here. Instead of redeploying the project, I'm going to generate a project file by pressing F7 or by selecting Create Update in the Deploy menu bar. We need to do it for a specific terminal number or a range of terminal numbers we want to update. In our case, I'm going to generate for terminal number 1 and make sure that it's my terminal ID. Remember, you can go to Config and as you can see, the application tells me that this device has the ID number 1. I can exit generated here. OK. If we check the corresponding folder, terminal number 1, to PDA, we can see that the project file was created and is waiting to be sent. So we can update the application in the mobile device. The application fetches the file, updates and then restarts to apply the changes. And as you can see, it's already the new version. Remember that the file is deleted from the server upon a successful transfer. Therefore, this feature depends on the terminal ID property to work properly. If you have a lot of mobile devices, or if you work online, or simply don't want to bother yourself with numbering the devices, you have an alternative. Let me start by duplicating our button. Now we have two buttons to synchronize the application. And in this one, in the update project action, you can see another option, update project. This option does not transfer the file, therefore it doesn't require a communication profile because it does not transfer any type of file. It only updates the project which means we're responsible to transfer the file ourselves before updating the application. So let's select this option and see what you can do to transfer the file. Basically, you can do it by any means you wish. We can do it by FTP if you don't want to use MIS Communicator or any other mean you see fit. In our case, with a powerful communication tool as MIS Communicator, I'm going to use it. We can retrieve files from the server with get file from PC action. We start by specifying the communication profile to use. In this case, we are going to select the TCP. Now we need to specify the file. 
you can get it from any place on the server, but in that case, you need to grant access to the whole server in MIS Communicator at the product configuration level. So, in the same place where the path is defined, I mean the synchro folder, you can tell MIS Communicator that you only have access to this path and its subfolders, or to the entire server. For safety reasons, I'm going to use just this folder, and I'm not going to enable any other option in MIS Communicator, meaning that the mobile devices can only access this path. So, I can create folders and files in this path and access it from the mobile device. So, back to our action. To fetch the file, if you check the notes, Calypso tells that if it starts with a backslash, the working folder on the PC will be the one defined on the MIS communicator. That's what we want. We want to get file from that folder. So, backslash, and now, instead of inputting directly the name of the file, I'm going to use a keyword called project name, and all it's left is the extension. An update file for Calypso has a KZP extension. It's recommended to respect the case, because on Android, for example, the file system is case sensitive. For the target file, we can leave it empty, because when that's the case, the file is stored in 2PDA folder. The same one when it's Calypso automatically fetching the file. As for the mode, we'll replace the file if it already exists. And, of course, we won't delete it from the server. This way, another device can retrieve it if necessary. That's it. We can exit the application. We start by deploying it to the mobile device. Now we can see that we have now two update buttons. Let's change the version of the project, just to make sure the project was updated. And Calypso always prompts to make a backup when changing the project version or database version. We select No, and we generate a new project file. We can generate it for any terminal ID we want, because once we do it, we have to move it to the Synchro folder. So, we generated the file for the terminal number 1, which means we need to go to the terminal number 1 to PDA, cut this off, and paste it here. Now, we can click the Synchronize App button. And Calypso fetches the file from the server, updates, restarts, and we can see that this is our new version and the file is still on the server. Notice now that if we log in and press the button again, it fetches the same file, updates and restarts again. So, the problem is, you usually don't put this update method in a button. You run it in the opening of the form, and in that case, we have a problem. Notice that every time we press that button, Calypso fetches the file and updates the application regardless of the version. So, in the case of an automatic process, in the opening of the form, your project will be in an infinite loop. There's a simple solution for that. We just need to manage the project version. One way of achieving that is through a simple text file. In the same folder we place the project update, I'll create a text file. Holding the project version and call it version. In our project, before retrieving the update file, let's fetch the version file. So, we can do another get file from PC to get the backslash version.txt file. I'm going to save it in the project folder path, which can be retrieved with the keyword pfolder and its cross platform. You should always use the keyword pfolder to work in the path of your mobile device. So, on pfolder, I'm going to create the version.txt file. If it exists, I want to replace it, and I don't want to delete the source file. Afterwards, it's time to load the content of that file. We can do that with file load content. I'm going to store it in the temporary variable 0, and rename it to server version, and save. 
Finally, we need to compare the version on the server with the one of the current application. If server version is different from project version, we need to update, otherwise we do nothing. We can even remove the else. Let's save. Redeploying the application. Let's log in. All that matters now is the version file. Our current version is 1.0, so I'm going to put that in the file. Save it and press the sync up button. And as you can see, after downloading the version file, it does nothing because it has the same version of the project we are running. We can change it on the project to 1.1, save, do not backup, generate a new project file, move it to the synchro folder, but even this won't be enough because we haven't updated the value on the text file. If we now say the new version is 1.1, save and press the button, Calypso fetches the version file, checks it, and then fetches the KZP file because it's a different version. He updates, reboots, and if we log in again and try to update again, we can see that it does nothing. We can even log out to see that the version is 1.1. Never forget, you can copy paste forms, controls and actions between projects, so you don't need to develop the same script over and over again. There is also another way to update your application that basically does the same thing we've described in the previous method. It creates the project update and the version file in the synchro folder and allows us to choose when the project should be updated. I'm going to duplicate the previous button, delete all the actions except the update project and in the update project I'm going to choose get project update and update the project. Select the synchro type, the TCP communication profile and leave the update if it's different. You could also choose update always or update if it's higher. Now let's deploy the application again. Login. Now if we try to update nothing happens as expected. Now we change the project version. Select no to not backup. Generate the project update. This time we select the synchro folder and unselect the previous option. Press generate. And as you can see, the update file is generated this time in the synchro folder along with a file with the KVP extension, which holds the version of the update. Now, if we try again to update, the update is transferred and the application automatically updates and restarts itself. Let's log in again, and if we try to update, nothing happens. Congratulations, you concluded the tutorial about application update. See you in the next one.